ChatGPT has apparently been secretly running a new model since last week. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. As you have heard over the last week or so from my show, there's been a lot of speculation about a potential new model release. It turns out that at least as of the time of recording, which to be sure is before when some leakers had suggested that a bigger new model would be announced, OpenAI has confirmed that something new has been going on. Yesterday evening, they tweeted, there's a new GPT-40 model out in ChatGPT since last week. Hope you're all enjoying it and check it out if you haven't. We think you'll like it. Now, I had mentioned that some people had suggested that based on their anecdotal evidence, their personal experience, there did seem to be something improved. Hyperwrite CEO Matt Schumer, for example, wrote, Something might be going on with GPT-40. For the first time in a long time, it provided better vibes on an output than 3.5 Sonnet. Really surprised. We'll keep using it today to see if it continues. Others pointed out that GPT-40 seemed to be able to actually beat certain tests that it had struggled with in the past, such as answering which number is greater, 9.11 or 9.9. Yet, interestingly, not everyone was all that enthused with this announcement. And it wasn't just because of some potential disappointment that it wasn't a bigger release, although there was certainly a bit of that as well. Some people shared examples of answers where it still struggled, at least one of which the official ChatGPT Twitter account responded to saying, lots of work left to do, we're on it. But there was some consternation about the nature of the release in general. Professor Ethan Mollick writes, Another release without release notes. I get the point also made by Google about their mysterious new model, that it is hard to write release notes for LLMs. But I would love to see some attempt to explain what changed. People actually use ChatGPT for real tasks and need guidance. Gradio founder Abu Bakr Abid gave an example of a context where this is a real problem. They quote tweeted the ChatGPT announcement and said, This is why academic research should never use LLMs via APIs. You have no idea what model and surrounding software you are interacting with, and it can be changed at any time without notice. Might as well throw reproducibility out the window. Accelerate Harder writes, Actually annoyed by this. Due to randomness and confirmation bias, people always try to claim ChatGPT changed when it hasn't. But now they are actually updating it without telling anyone, so these speculations will never end. Now, for my part, I am always open to and excited about a new model. I haven't had a chance to dig in too much to see if I've noticed improved performance, although I was impressed with ChatGPT's ability to design a custom Magic the Gathering set based on HP Lovecraft over the weekend, so maybe that was the new model in action. But I still do also think it's fascinating that we really continue to be just making these tiny incremental updates. As I've said before on the show, this is either because those are the only updates that are available right now, or because there's a larger sea change lurking, and because of the competitive landscape, OpenAI doesn't yet feel the need to jump all the way to those increased capacities. There could also be safety issues, etc. But in either case, for now, these sort of incremental upgrades seem to be all that we're going to get. For completeness, we should mention, speaking of incremental upgrades, that over the last couple days, Google has been making moves as well. They announced a Gemini 1.5 flash upgrade that not only promised improved output, but did so at 70% reduced prices. They also rolled out fine-tuning to all developers and added support for 100-plus new languages in the API. Now, when it comes to new models that are exciting people, there have been a bunch of announcements. One announcement that's getting some attention is this one about an AI model that has the ability to detect diabetes, stroke, COVID, and other diseases with 98% accuracy by studying a human's tongue. The new system in question was developed by researchers at Middle Technical University and the University of South Australia in Australia, and claims to have the ability to diagnose a wide array of conditions. Said senior study author Ali Al-Naji, typically people with diabetes have a yellow tongue, cancer patients a purple tongue with a thick greasy coating, and acute stroke patients present with an unusually shaped red tongue. Key features of this evaluation include the color of the tongue, shade of the coating, form of the tongue, depth of the coating, oral moisture, tongue crevices, contusions, red spots, and tooth impressions. Now, interestingly, this particular model was designed by replicating a 2,000-year-old technique from traditional Chinese medicine. Speaking of AI and scientific research, there is a ton of buzz on X right now about Sakana AI. As summarized by Grok, Sakana AI, in collaboration with the University of Oxford, has unveiled the AI Scientist, an advanced AI system engineered to fully automate scientific research. The system is capable of generating research ideas, writing code, conducting experiments, summarizing results, and even writing and peer-reviewing entire scientific papers. Operating at a cost of about $15 per paper, the AI scientist aims to accelerate scientific discovery, potentially reducing the need for large human research teams, and exploring a wider range of hypotheses. This innovation marks a significant step towards integrating AI and advanced scientific knowledge, possibly leading to breakthroughs in AGI. Now, the responses to this are really a Rorschach test for how people think about AI safety right now. Many people are incredibly excited about what they see as the potential for a new era of scientific discovery. 
Others are a little bit more nervous that this could lead to a so-called fast takeoff, where AI starts improving self-recursively in a way that we can no longer control. Lastly today, AI continues to find its way into the real world, with the Tokyo Metropolitan Government launching an AI system that uses high-altitude cameras to detect fires and building collapses in real time to accelerate disaster response during earthquakes. Given that experts believe there is a 70% chance of a significant earthquake occurring directly beneath Tokyo within the next 30 years, this particular use of the technology is highly non-theoretical. That, however, is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.